Uh, an important part of why we're here and why we serve God the way that we do. Amen. Pentecost tonight. Pentecost. And I believe in the moving of the Spirit of God. I believe that God is still alive. So I want to look at that. I want to see what that means when uh, uh, Jesus spoke and uh, an understanding for what we have for today. John 16, chapter number 1. The Word of God says, These things, Jesus is speaking here, These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. They shall put, put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he hath done God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you, because at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, whether goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow, uh, unto you sorrow hath filled your heart. Then I want to focus on verse number seven. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth: it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come unto you, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I'm just going to stop right there. Amen. I want to look at a few things this evening. And if not anything else, I want to be educational. And I want to challenge you to allow the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, to work and to move in your life. We find that Jesus was talking here, it was about 12 hours before He would uh, be on the cross of Calvary. He knew what was coming, they didn't see, there was 11 disciples with Him. Uh, of course, that 12th one uh, did not make His way toward Gethsemane with them. Uh, Judas Iscariot, he, he was going and doing that which He had done to portray Jesus. And uh, so... Uh, uh, we find that as they make their way down the steep slope of, of what would be known as the Kidron Valley, maybe there was the disciples ahead of him, maybe he was by, uh, in front of them. I don't know, but, but I would imagine that there in the distance he looked at the Mount of Olivet, Olives, and, and he almost smiled to himself because he knew what was ahead. He knew that he was about to do an atoning work. He knew that even though his disciples didn't understand what was about to take place, as he was going to be gone from them, he knew that he was going to send them the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Are you thankful for the gift of the Holy Ghost tonight? Amen. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. And uh, I, he knew that it would be about six weeks and he would ascend back unto his father. But he realized that after his ascension, uh, he would be gone for a very long time. Oh, 2,000 years, brother Josh, it's been. And uh, that's a long time, isn't it? And if you've been around 2,000 years, very long time. But he knew that he would, it would be necessary for him to send the Spirit of God, of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter to men. Although Jesus couldn't be there with them, they would need someone that would guide them and lead them and empower them and defend them and convict them of sin. So he knew that he would send the Holy Ghost. I want you to know that, that, that it was in the best interest of these men that he go away. He told them, I, I, I'm going to go away. But it's in your best interest that I go away because I'm going to send you the Comforter. Do you know God is still looking, knowing that the Comforter is in your best interest tonight? The Holy Ghost is in your best interest. 
He is here because He wants to help you. Amen. Uh, how uh, uh, His men wonder, uh, uh, how can such a thing be? Uh, uh, what could be better than having Jesus right here with us? But Jesus knew that there was something better. The Holy Ghost was what was needed. He was going to finish the work that the Father had sent Him to do. And now the Holy Ghost was going to come because in God's perfect timetable, Jesus had come and He had done His work almost 33 years. And His, his work, or maybe 33 and a half years, His work was soon to be accomplished. And now God the Father was going to send the Holy Ghost, amen, in the interest of mankind. Amen. The Holy Ghost. Amen. It was important for him to come. That comforter. That very gift from God. Some may look and say, well, you say that you, you, you serve God, but there is only one God. And we say, yes, there is only one God, Brother Josh. There's only one God, Sister Dodd. Even though we say God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yet they are one. But they are three distinct personalities of the Godhead. Uh, three different aspects that can help us understand God. He is the eternal Father. Uh, he is the Son who sacrificed on Calvary. Uh, and the Holy Ghost is the very Spirit of God. The Word of God says that those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so God allowed His Spirit, the Holy Ghost, amen, to be sent out so that we would know how to worship Him in spirit and in truth and the Holy Ghost is here to guide us into all truth we'll talk more about it a little bit later why do we need the Holy Ghost amen the very first thing that the word of God says is that he would reprove the world of sin amen the main uh, the main sin in the world today is that they have a lack of belief their disbelief in Jesus Christ they need someone, they need the Spirit of God to convict them of sin. Amen. Thank God for the Spirit of God that convicts of sin. Of the world, they reject God's only begotten Son. Uh, and every one of us is posed with the same question that Pontius Pilate, he, 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 he asked. He said, uh, what, what shall I do with this Jesus who is called Christ? Everyone in the world is posed with that same question. What shall I do with this Jesus that is called Christ? What will I do? Let me tell you what, when the Holy Ghost gets involved, amen, men and women will begin to repent of their sin. They will bow their knee and they will bow their heart, amen, to the power of the Holy Ghost that will help them to understand that they are bound by sin and they are on their way to an eternal hell unless they accept Jesus as their Savior. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 I appreciate the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. That convicts of sin. The Holy Ghost, amen, when given free reign in our heart, will always warn us of sin. Did you ever before you're going to do something but the Holy Ghost begins to tug at your heart. Or maybe you feel in an inappropriate way. The Holy Ghost tugs at your heart. Amen. It convicts of sin. But if He convicts of sin, the Holy Ghost. And we don't want any type of transgressions in our life. You know, I think that we live in a day and age in which no one wants to be called out on things. They want to be called out on sin. They want to be left sitting comfortable with their sin. But the Holy Ghost. I don't have to call someone out for the want. That's not my job. God's not called me to a ministry to point fingers and save someone's sin. But the Holy Ghost gets in. And He begins to work in the heart. And He deals the sin. Why is it so important for us as believers to walk and to live in the Spirit. Because when we walk and we live in the Spirit, it convicts men of their sins. It's not me. I'm not condescending. But I stand upon the Word of God and I live in the authority of the Holy Ghost. And Brother Craig, 
There are times when men and women will get around and they'll be convicted of their sins because they're around us because the Holy Ghost's work is at work in our life. That's why we need the Holy Ghost tonight, brother. That's why we need the Holy Ghost tonight, sister. Amen. Because we want to see our loved ones saved. We want to be effective in the world that we live in. Amen. There comes a time, Brother Walt, where we have to stand up and say, but I don't do this because the Word of God uh, teaches contrary to it. And it's not us uh, making someone feel bad. Amen. But then the Holy Ghost begins to tug on the hearts of others. And, 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 and then you ever walk in a place and they know that you're a Christian and all of a sudden the tone and the atmosphere changes. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost is at work convicting of sin. Amen. Someone will say, I know that they're a Christian. You better watch how you're talking. You better watch how you're conducting yourself. That's not you. That's the Holy Ghost that's at work in that other person's life. Thank God for the Holy Ghost, amen, that convicts and reproves of sin. Hey, I want to tell you something tonight. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He's not a pest. You ever have someone just pest you before? I hate to be pested. I'd be nagged about something. I, I'm sure that most of you are like that. You don't want to be constantly nagged about something. Something can be said and you you can attend to it, but, 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 but don't nag me. The Holy Ghost isn't a nag. The Holy Ghost isn't a confess. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Ghost is a friend that sticks closer to that brother. The Holy Ghost loves your soul. And so he'll nudge. And he'll convict. And he'll improve. Because the Holy Ghost wants to see you make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. Everybody knows Jesus could have been everywhere at one time. He knew that the work of the Holy Ghost was necessary to reprove the world of sin. By nature, do you know that we're lovers of darkness? You know, I'd say that we're all nocturnal here. If you would, maybe you might say, but oh, no, I go to sleep when the sun goes down. Well, we live our lives spiritually in the dark. By nature, we are lovers of, of, of darkness. That's what we like. But you know what? The Holy Ghost pulls us and draws us by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. To the light. And he said, no more walking in the shadows. And no more walking in the darkness. But how about walking with me in the light? Here's the light. Here's the way. Let me guide you. Here's the way. Walk ye in it. Amen. Aren't you thankful for the Holy Ghost tonight that teaches us how to walk? Amen. We don't have to live life in the shadows. We don't have to live life in the darkness. Amen. Our very nature is changed because the Holy Ghost convicts us of our sins and He draws us out of the darkness and He places us into the light and He leads us in the light. Oh, thank God. He's unique in the world today. The world world's system is, let's cover up sin and let's make ourselves feel comfortable. You know, the world likes that. The value of, of, of what God places value. Things are, are moral. The world lives in immorality. And so uh, they, they, the, uh, the, the, they'll make all types of excuses and, and they'll cover themselves up well so that they can live an immoral life because that is what's comfortable. But the Holy Ghost gets in there and He shines a light. Amen. And He says, you can't be comfortable in sin anymore, but you got to come out of sin. you got to live differently. I'm thankful that we can live a holy life tonight that's pleasing to God. And the reason why we can is not because it's by my own works, but it's because the power of the Holy Ghost that's in me, amen, it burns out sin and draws me to walk in the light, amen, and wants me to live my life in the light of eternity, being pleasing to God. You may say, Brother Bill, how can you say that? Do you remember in Isaiah chapter number 6 when, when those angelic angels came and, and they showed themselves? And Isaiah said, Woe is me, for I am undone. He realized that in the presence of God Almighty, hey, he was a man of unclean lips. There were some things he needed to change. And that's what the Holy Ghost does for us. Not as a pest, but as a friend. He brings us to life of a living Christ. Amen. That we can live the Word of God. We can talk the Word of God. The very essence of our being can be like the nature of God. Because the Holy Ghost convicts of sin. Praise God. 
Praise God. <coughs> Amen. I'm glad that the Holy Ghost works. Mm -hmm. Some people, uh, you know, they've said, man, you made me feel uncomfortable when you were preaching. That's, that's not me. I, I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, make anyone uncomfortable. I, I want you to live holy. But that's the Holy Ghost that makes folks feel uncomfortable. Amen. I'm thankful for a good friend in ministry who is the Holy Ghost. He won't let me go astray. He convicts me of my sin. Jesus said this, that the Holy Ghost would convict the world of righteousness. And sometimes, you know, we may ask, how do you know if you're doing right? Folks have asked me that, Sister God. How do I know if I'm doing right? How do I know? Well, number one, the Word of God. The Word of God will tell us how to live and what to do right. But number two is the Holy Ghost will convince the inner man of the righteousness of God. You know, I, I'm not... I believe there needs to be a standard. I believe that there are platform codes. I believe that there are things that, that we need to do that, that are right before God. But I, I, can't, I can't place any type of a, 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 a lifestyle in any way on any person. They would just conform to what I said. But when the Holy Ghost gets in someone's heart, He will change them that they live holy. Well, well, I want my conversation to be whole. I want the content of my heart to be whole. I want the things in my home to be whole. I want the things in American Revival Church to be whole. Wherever I go, I want it to be holy. You know why? Because I want the Holy Ghost to always convince me of the righteousness of God. Amen. I know that I know that I know what is right. Paul said it this way. I am, pers uh, I, 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 I am persuaded uh, tonight. And, and when he said that he was persuaded, it meant that in the depth of his soul that he knew. Aren't you glad what the songwriter wrote? Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. There was an assurance of knowing that you know that you know that you're right with God because the Holy Ghost makes it real in your heart and you know that you're walking in the right way because the Holy Ghost is convincing you of what is the appropriate way to live in the light of eternity. How can the Word of God be so diversified to be so real in so many generations since Jesus has gone away, even since the Old Testament because, Brother Doug, the Holy Ghost makes the Word of God real in our heart and our life. The Holy Ghost is what will keep a man. We read the Word of God, we apply the Word of God, and then the Holy Ghost makes it real, convincing us of what is righteous. Amen. I'm glad that I know my have believed in. It's not a speculation. It's not a wonder. But I know whom I have believed in. And I am persuaded. I'm persuaded that the Holy Ghost lives, leads us into righteous living. Not only to convict the world of sin and convince of righteousness, but we'll judge the world. You know, this world, Jesus said this. He said that right now, he will reprove the world of sin, of, of, of righteousness and judgment. He said of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. You know right now who the prince of this world is? Satan. He thinks that he has it all in control when he's telling folks how to live for the world. He'll tell them how they should live and what they should do and how they should act and how they should respond and what is morality. But I need to tell you something. His judgment upon this world is about to expire. His lease is about up on this world. 
And Jesus Christ is coming back. And He is going to judge. And He is going to judge well. And Sister Tina, it's not going to be a judgment that has an, an expiration on it like Satan's is. But He is going to judge for all eternity. He will be the final judge. And so I want you to know this evening that way before Jesus comes and ever judges this world, amen, don't let the, the spirit of the world get in your heart and tell you what's right and how you should live because the prince of this world is far off the mark. Amen. But when we allow the Holy Ghost to get in and begin to work and move in our life and judge us, uh, what should we watch? Uh, you know, when I was growing up, uh, there was a lot of preaching against TV. Now there's lots of resources out there for Christians and, and educational things. You know, I, I think that we have to we have to say, God, what are those things that I'm going to set before my eye? Almost everybody has a smartphone. Almost everybody has a computer. Almost everybody has a TV or a monitor. What are we? Uh, well, we want the Holy Ghost to be in charge of that. Amen. Uh, God, you convict of what is right and what is righteous. Uh, should I go here? Should I participate in that? And, and, and what should my lingo? It's easy to pick up lingo of this world, isn't it? Uh, you know, we hear other folks say it, and it's easy to pick up those little uh, 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 antidotes and expressions that they express. Uh, but sometimes we have to say, well, well Lord, uh, is this pleasing to you? Jesus said it was expedient. It was necessary that He go away because he was going to send us a comfort. He knew the condition of this world and what the church would need. So God help us. You are my judge. Amen. And one day, amen, we're going to be able to say, uh, as Jesus splits the eastern sky, the King is coming. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus, not with fear and trembling, but with rejoicing and shouting because the Holy Ghost has already judged and worked in our heart and in our life. We need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. We need the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, Jesus said that He would lead us into all truth. Wow, we live in a world where what is truth? What is truth? Teachers nowadays, they have a lot of different ways of teaching. And I was reading about a teacher who who uh, didn't want to uh, be offensive to anyone. Uh, so uh, there's all types of fairy tales and, 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 and all types of alleged truth that is taught, but sometimes uh, folks don't want to, to hear the truth, so teachers tip tell around the truth. I don't know about you, but when I go on an airplane, I would prefer that that engineer on the airplane had a teacher who taught them the truth, not just because they thought 2 plus 2 equals 5, uh, they, they allowed them to have it, patted them on the back, uh, but I know 2 plus 2 equals 4, and, and, and taught them, because if, if I'm heading up in that plane, I want to know that they were taught the truth. Amen? I want to tell you something greater than heading up in a plane, getting in a vehicle, even putting your, your, your food in the oven for all those engineers. Amen. We better make sure that we allow the teacher of the Holy Ghost to speak to our heart and our life. Amen. Uh, that is, uh, the, uh, the Holy Ghost will lead us and guide us into all truth. Truth. This generation needs truth. Not relative truth, but actual truth. Not partial truth, but whole truth. He will lead us into all truth regarding Himself and eternity. You know, it might have seemed weird that in the book of Acts that the Holy Ghost calls Philip away from citywide revivals to the desert for what Ethiopia needed. But God knew the truth. God. That man, Sister Stacy, needed to hear the truth. And so Philip was led. We look at Peter. We find that, <coughs> that he, he questions and, and asks, why do you stand gazing? Why, why, why are you, this is the truth. 
These men aren't drunk as you suppose, but this is the Holy Ghost. Amen. We need to be led by the Holy Ghost. What if, what if the Holy Ghost would nudge your heart to say something to the lady at Walmart who's checking you out? What if, Sister Dot, the Holy Ghost nudged you to say something to your neighbor? What if, Brother Craig, while you were working with those guys you worked with for several years, the Holy Ghost nudged you and said, I need you to say something to him. But Eli, you're down there working at the laundromat and you're cleaning. But the Holy Ghost nudges you and says, that man or woman needs a word from God. See, the Holy Ghost wants to lead us tonight. He wants to reprove the world of sin. I think the majority, if not all of us in here, has answered that question. What are you going to do with this man called Jesus? He claims to be Christ. If he got saved, it was because of the Holy Ghost by the Then how do we live our life? We live our life being led by the Spirit. Everything about it is being led by the Holy Ghost. And then He prompts us so that we can be effective for eternity. You know, we talk about being Pentecostal. I believe that God wants to fill with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. It's for every believer. Every believer should covet that. That out of your belly will flow the rivers of, of water. It's for every believer tonight. What did he tell the 120? There was way more than 120. The 120 were obedient. They went to the upper room. And they waited and they tarried for the Holy Ghost. He came and he sat down upon them. And they began to speak with other tongues as he gave utterance. We need the Holy Ghost. Amen. God wants to fill with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. That is Pentecost. But Pentecost is also being directed by the Spirit of God in truth. Allowing him to shed light upon our life to make sure there isn't sin. And to guide us into all truth. To allow Him to judge us. Don't become conditioned to this world. We become conditioned to the Word of God and the Spirit of God as He judges us. If Sister Beth would come to the piano tonight. Amen. My message tonight is because I want us to be Pentecostal. I want every believer in here to be filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking other tongues. But I want to affect your life in such a way that it leads you and guides you and judges you. Oh, God, I love this. We don't need any Christians going out and following us. That brings reproach. The only thing that can keep us from sin is the Holy Ghost. We want to be effective for the kingdom of God. The thing that will make us effective is being led by the Spirit of God. He wants to lead you. So tonight, can I invite you in around this altar? I know that Jesus in a tangible body isn't in our midst, but he knew that we would need the Holy Ghost because it was the Father's plan. He said, I'm going to send, but I'm going to send you another comforter. Let me give you a little bit of humor. A little boy came home from Sunday school when his mom and dad said to him, what did you learn about in Sunday school today? What was your scripture about? He said, Mom and Dad, I learned that we all have a blanket. We all have a blanket? 
He said, yeah. The Sunday school teacher talked about each one of us having the comforter because God sent the Holy Ghost to be our comforter. He will comfort us. And we all do have a blanket. He will protect us. He will warm us. He will convict us. He will judge us. He will lead us. We need the Holy Ghost active in our life. So with that being said tonight, would you get around and would you allow the power of the Holy Ghost just to minister to you? If you're struggling with what is right and what is wrong, amen, the Holy Ghost.